the lamb, the dove and the goat. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, tonight, I would like to take a subject of lamb and dove, you know, a sheep is a very sensitive and odd animal, a sheep never was asked to manufacture wool, he was asked to bear wool, because he is a sheep, and as long as he is a sheep, he will bear wool, because that's his nature, and so is it with the Christian church, we were never asked to manufacture fruits, we were asked to bear fruit. Galatians 5 said, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, faith, peace, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness, patience, these are not to be manufactured, they're to be products that comes from the inside out, the outside life that we live proves what's on the inside, now, when we try to manufacture the fruits of the Spirit, and we always turn out hypocrisy, because you cannot manufacture Christianity, it's an experience by a Spirit that lives in you and bears fruit of itself, the spirit inside of us bearing fruits of its presence, that's God's program, it can never be changed, the lamb and the dove, and I think this is one of the most striking instance of all the scriptures, when it so pleased God, that when he wanted to symbolize his son on earth, he was called a lamb, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, and then when God was going to symbolize himself, he was represented by a dove, now, if you notice, of all the creatures that roam the earth, there's nothing as meek and gentle as a lamb, there's nothing so innocent as a lamb, and of the dove, there's no fowl that flies the air of the heavens as meek and as gentle as the dove, it's the most sensitive bird of all the birds, and the lamb is the most sensitive of all the animals, therefore, if you'll notice, the lamb and the dove has a spirits alike and natures alike, if it would not been that well there will not be communion. If there would have been a crow flying down on the lamb, the lamb would not stood that, and if the, the dove would flew down on a wolf, the dove would have stood it, for their natures wasn't the same, so it had to be a lamb and a dove symbolized together, God and his son for they have the same nature and they could live together, now I've often wondered why God ever represented us as sheep and lambs, the Bible say, we are the sheep of his pasture, if you notice, a lamb is one of the most unusual animals. That lamb cannot find his way back when he's lost, I've raised sheep, and let a sheep get lost, he will stand there and bleat till he dies. He cannot find his way back, he's got to have the shepherd to lead him back, if anyone knows about raising sheep and the nature of sheep, since a sheep cannot find his way around, he has to be led, even in the slaughter pens, and the lamb could not depend upon its own travel, a lamb has to be led, or guided, or shepherded and we will never find our way back through any other way but though the shepherd, the human race lost, it needs to be shepherded back. The Bible say, all of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all, brother, the first step that you ever made in your life, someone had to lead you, that's right, the mother taught you how to walk, and you'd make a few steps and fall down, and get up and you thought you were doing great things, and your last step you ever make, someone will be leading you, Jesus was represented as a lamb, why did he choose the lamb and the dove? It's because their natures are the same, that's the reason the two could get along together, their natures were meek, humble, lowly, and that's why they could well together. The dove and the lamb came together, the Bible said he saw the Spirit of God like a dove, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God and the dove came on the lamb and abode, what if the lamb would have snorted like a wolf, the dove would have been gone, if we are the lambs of God, we should have the nature of lambs if we expect the dove to abide in us, the reason the dove stayed on the lamb, it's because their natures was the same, the dove will stays on the Christian as long as he is a lamb, but when he takes a different nature, the dove will take its flight, the sheep that is the Christ never tried to do his own will, he said, I come not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me, as the Father has sent me, so send I you, then he never only sent us, but he goes with us, the sheep doesn't rely upon his own ability, he relies upon the ability of the shepherd, he doesn't question his shepherd, he just goes with his shepherd, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, no one can snatch them out of my hand, I want you to notice what kind of a lamb this was, a lamb has that was led, 
and this precious land that we're thinking about, he was led. He said not my will, but thine be done, led to the slaughter. Sometimes someone said, why was Jesus led to the Calvary? The Bible said they led him away, put a rope around his neck, and led him away for he was a lamb of God, why was he born in a manger? Because he was a lamb, he had to be born in the barn, he was a lamb led to the slaughter, the Lord said in the scripture, I am the good shepherd, I know my own sheep, and they know me, but you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me, the dove. The dove is a very unusual bird, a dove is the only bird that we know of that doesn't have a gall, a dove has no gall at all, all the other birds have gall, but he has no gall, so in the dove there is no bitterness, and in God there is no bitterness, now, the dove the reason he's made like that it's because of his diet, now, he could not eat the things that a vulture eats, because it would kill him right away, and another thing, I'd like to speak about the dove right here is that a dove is one of the most cleanest birds there is that flies the heavens, there's nothing as clean as a dove, and he doesn't have to watch about it, his body puts out a oil that goes to his feathers and constantly keeps him clean, what a symbol, the believer has got a oil of the spirit that lives in him, keeps his feathers clean, the dust and things doesn't bother a dove, his little body is oily, and it keeps the dust and things away it just constantly flows, and as he flies, the dust flies away from him, it cannot stick on him, because this soil comes from him for that purpose, and dirt cannot stick on him, something of the world, and she could not light on that, why, it was against her nature, now, the dove puts out a oil to keep herself clean, and the lamb has lanolin to keep the weather off of him, and we are likened unto God's lambs, may God fill my lamp tonight with that kind of oil, that the world with all of its pleasures, and its riches, and its great glamour will not stick to me, that we'll be able to throw it off through a oil that comes from the inside working out to keep the church clean, as the old song used to go, give me oil in my lamp, keep me shining, God puts holy oil inside, oil in the Bible represents the spirit keeping the church clean, the dove is one bird that fly like the crow or the scavenger, but he can't eat the diet of the scavenger for his makeup is different, he has no gall, so he cannot digest the things that the scavenger bird would eat, he only can eat the clean and pure things, how it types the Christian that packs the dove in his heart, he just can't stand the foul things of the world, he's humble, what's any sweeter than the CO of the dove? Watch the birds in nature, watch the little dove how as he flies, what a different bird he is, he can't eat like the crow can, see? He has no gall in him. He doesn't have to take a bath in the water, because he's got something on the inside of him, it cleans him from the inside out, that the dove coming down on the lamb, to lead the lamb, and it led him to the slaughter that, that dove could not have descended upon any other type of animal, because they both had to be of the same nature, you need the guide who will guide you to truth, and truth is the word, the Holy Spirit will guide you, and it's always has been, God don't never have to change nothing, cause he's infinite and he knows what's best, he's omnipresent, he's omniscient, he's everything, he is a confirmer of the way he's leading you, the Holy Ghost is the guide, he is the confirmer of the same word that he's teaching, now who leads you? That's the question, for we're all led by something tonight, we have to be, when Israel left Egypt for the promised land and the Lord went before them in a pillar of cloud to guide their way by day, and in a pillar of fire to give them light at night, so that they could travel by day or night, God knowed that they had never traveled that way before, it was only forty miles, but yet they needed someone to go with them, otherwise they'd lose their way, so God sent them a guide, Exodus 13 verse 21 say something like, I send my angel before you, the pillar of fire, to keep you in the way, to guide you to this promised land, and the children of Israel followed that guide, the pillar of fire by night, and the pillar of cloud by day, when it stopped, they stopped, when it journeyed, they journeyed, and when he got them close to the land, and they wasn't fit to go over, he led them back into the wilderness again, he wouldn't go with them, I have one headquarters, that's from heaven, wherever he sends I'll go, 
Whatever he says, I say, God told them that he'd send them a guide, he'd lead them the way, and as long as they followed that pillar of fire, they were all right, he led them up to the promised land gate, and then that was as far as he was to go, then Joshua, the great warrior, remember the day that he told them, sanctify yourself, the third day God's going to open up Jordan down here and we're going across? Now, watch what he said, I like this, in the scripture, Joshua said to them, now, you follow the ark, cause you've never been this way before, God won't permit that ark to go anywhere but right, everyone followed it, and it went right across Jordan, the ark was the guide, somewhere else the Bible say, we have seen his star in the east, and followed it all the way here in the west to worship him, where is he? They followed God's provided way, then the star appeared again and they rejoiced with exceeding great joy, they saw the guide again, the star was leading them, the Lord is the morning star, the dove is represented in the Bible all the way from Genesis to Revelations, in the ark the dove and the crow set on the same roost, both of them were birds, one could fly where the other one flew, one could do just anything the other one could do, but when they were turned loose to take their choice, they turned the dove loose first, and the little fellow flew about, and the Bible said, she could find no rest for the soles of her feet, every time she could find something to set on, it was a dead carcass, an old dead, and if a man is ever born with that spirit of the dove in him he will find no rest for the soul that's in him, you can't find pleasure anywhere, backslider, you're the most miserable person in the world, you'll sound like your testimony like Peter said, to whom should we go? Where can we go? You're the only one that has the words of eternal life forfeiting his right, I have had a little experience in raising sheep on a farm when I was a boy, we used to take and shear the sheep, a shorn, shaven sheep, you'd catch them and throw them up on the table, they don't kick and they just lay still and give up everything that they have, their wool, they let you shear them off without kicking and hollering about it, I hope you understand what I mean, sheep lay still, now, a real sheep forfeits its rights, and that's what I was trying to get at yesterday when I was speaking of the way some of our Christian sisters are dressing and going on. The Lowe's opened his mouth, they pulled the beard from his face, yet he had a privilege, he said at the crucifixion, I could speak to my father, and he would send me million legions of angels, he could do it, but in order to be a lamb, he forfeited his right, in order to die in your stead. He was a lamb, I want you to notice, Jesus was a willing lamb, the lamb has one thing that's his wool on him, he's willing to forfeit his wool, that's the only thing that he has, for your sake and my sake, he forfeits what he's got, we know so much theology, then the lamb can't lead us, because it's against our ideas, if you are a sheep you've got to forfeit your idea, you're never willing to surrender your heart for divine leadership of the Holy Spirit to lead us to the fountains of waters of life, we're never willing to do it. The hardest thing for people to get in their head that the Holy Spirit leads, sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. If you're a lamb, you're led by the Spirit of God, 